Hi folks, Yanni here from Unity Gym. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to completely discredit Michael Mosley and his SBS television show, Trust Me, I'm a Doctor. Particularly the topic of protein supplements discussed recently. In my rebuttal, I will show you exactly why I think he's a misleading, hot-winded sensationalist. Plus, if you stay with me till the end, I'll teach you exactly how to maximize muscle, ba uh, muscle growth based on current published scientific research. On Tuesday the 17th May, I was alerted to a television program that aired the night before on SBS because it highlighted some really interesting information on the use of protein supplements. As a result, some really great questions were asked here at my gym in North Sydney. As I've mentioned, I'm referring to journalist Michael Mosley and in particular, one of the topics he discussed regarding the use of protein supplements after exercise to improve muscle protein synthesis. If you didn't catch the program, after conducting a relatively benign study of 22 people for eight weeks who exercised and were given a post-protein supplement or a placebo, Mosley concluded that the resulting improvements in muscle strength and size were identical for both the control group and placebo group, thus implying that protein supplements were not effective. Unfortunately, in this particularly televised study, the amount of dietary protein consumed by the test subjects in addition to the control drink or placebo were not reported. Information regarding specifics on the experience and level of physical preparedness of the test subjects and the volume or intensity of their workouts was also missing. Although compelling television journalism, many questions were left unanswered. But the question we were all left asking after was, are we wasting our hard-earned cash purchasing potentially useless protein powders? Well, according to Mosley's tribe, the answer was yes. But there's a whole world of highly published nutritional science and sports scientists who disagree. And there's also a rather large pile of very good research paper and published peer-reviewed scientific journal articles that will support the rebuttal. The thing is, Michael Mosley, although makes for a great journalist, doesn't actually have a very good understanding of nutrition or exercise. In fact, his knowledge on the matters when compared to say an authority figure on protein synthesis or exercise and sports science is very poor. If we were to compare him to say Professor Stuart Phillips, a PhD from the Department of Kinesiology and Director at the Physical Activity Centre for Excellence, or perhaps Professor John Hawley. John is currently head of the Exercise and Nutrition Research Group and Professor of Exercise Metabolism in the Department of Exercise Sciences at ACU. He doesn't come close. Professor Phillips's work is centered around the critical topic on the maintenance of me metabolically active muscle tissue and its relation to optimal health. I'd say he definitely qualifies as an authority figure on the topic of protein synthesis and protein intake. And Professor Hawley has published over 200 scientific manuscripts, written over 80 articles for technical journals, and has authored numerous book chapters for exercise, biochemistry, and sports medicine texts. John currently sits on the editorial boards for many international journals, including the American Journal of Physiology, Endocrinology, and Metabolism. Other great American journals he's on the board of include the Journal of Applied Physiology, the International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise, Metabolism, plus Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise. In addition to all that, he's on the board of the UK Journal of Sports Sciences and New Zealand's the Journal of Sports Medicine. His lab's research includes the interaction of exercise and diet on skeletal muscle metabolism, the molecular basis of exercise training adaptations, the cellular basis underlying exercise-induced improvements in insulin action, and exercise nutrient interventions for weight loss. He is a consultant for several professional sports teams in Europe and Australia, and regularly invited to speak at numerous international conferences every year. In fact, Rad and I have both been extremely lucky to meet John in person and hear him speak live on two occasions right here in Sydney, Australia. Now, I will suggest Professor John Hawley definitely qualifies as an authority figure on the topic of protein synthesis and protein intake. In fact, 
We have a whole team of great exercise and sports scientists and nutritional scientists right here in Australia who are literally fronting the research on muscles, metabolism and protein synthesis. Another Aussie, Dr. Gary Slater, who's a senior lecturer on nutrition and dietetics at the University of the Sunshine Coast, practically wrote the book of protein synthesis. Gary is a sports dietitian and exercise physiologist passionate about assisting athletes and coaches to achieve the highest levels of sports performance. Gary currently serves on the so Sports Science Advisory Panel for the Australian Paralympic Committee and Surfing Australia. Plus, he's on the Sports Supplement Advisory Panel for the Australian Rugby Union, National Rugby League and Netball Australia. He is widely considered the godfather of protein synthesis from his peers for his extensive research on muscles and dietary protein requirements for athletes. Look guys, my point here is that it's very important we get our information from credible sources, especially when the topic of discussion can seriously impact your health. It's important to remember that although Mosley puts on an impressive show, that's all it ever is, a sensationalist television show. The biggest problem I have with Michael Mosley is not that his science, the science that he produces, is full of unexplained grey areas. It's not even that he has a terrible history of changing his viewpoint from episode to episode, or that he tends to cherry pick the studies he uses to support his often sensationalist claims. The problem I have is simply that he has an extremely poor understanding of nutrition and exercise when compared to the big guns. Professor Phillips has excellent work on the value of protein, especially whey protein powders, in relation to exercise. I urge that if you guys are really interested in the topic, jump onto PubMed and run a search for Phillips author on protein supplements and protein synthesis. Within 15 minutes, I could pull an impressive pile of great articles that I'm sure you'll find very interesting that I've got right here. Maybe this is where Mosley should have started. For example, protein ingestion increases myofibular protein synthesis after concurrent exercise. Now let's take a look at this study quickly. The purpose of this study was to determine the effect of protein supplementation on anabolic signaling and rates of myofibular mitochondrial protein synthesis after a single bout of exercise. Professor Phillips and his team of scientists used a randomised crossover design and eight healthy males were assigned to experimental trials consisting of resistance exercise followed by cycling with either a post-exercise whey protein shake or a placebo drink. Now incredibly accurate muscle biopsies were obtained at rest and at one and four hours after exercise. Ouch. I'll jump in here quickly and remind you guys that muscle biopsy is the big, ugly, painful needle that you may have seen Mosley use in the beginning of his show to prove that protein supplements do, in fact, enter the muscle quicker than regular food. But unfortunately, he failed to use that mechanism during his research study on the effectiveness, effectiveness of protein supplementation in general. That's kind of a real bummer for us because it really negates from the accuracy of the assessment. Okay, back to the study guys. Professor Phillips concluded that a concurrent training session promotes anabolic adaptive responses in the increases of metabolic oxidative expression in the skeletal muscle. Okay, in layman's terms, that means that the muscle was sufficiently damaged by the workout. Now, I quote, pro-ingestion after combined resistance and endurance exercise enhances myofibular protein synthesis and reduces markers of muscle catabolism and thus is likely an important nutritional strategy to enhance adaptation responses with concurrent exercise. In other words, they're saying the exact opposite to Mosley, taking protein supplements definitely supports muscle growth and development. Hmm, that's kind of confusing, isn't it? But there's heaps more. I've got a stack of research papers. Another well-documented and published study by Pro Professor Phillips, Nutrition Supplement in Support of Resistance Exercise Counter Age Related Sarcopenia, published in the American Society of Nutrition in 2015. This is a cracker. According to Phillips, age related sarcopenia composed of myopenia, which is the decline in muscle mass, and dynopenia, a decline in muscle strength, can compromise physical function, increase risk of disability, and lower quality of life in older adults above 50. I quote directly from the journal abstract. There are no available pharmaceutical treatments for this condition. 
but evidence shows resistance training is a viable and relatively low cost treatment with an exceptionally positive side effect profile. Further evidence suggests, and this is where it gets good, that resistance training induced increases in muscle mass, strength and function are enhanced by dietary protein or protein supplements. This study focused on adjunctive nutritional strategies which have a reasonable evidence base to enhance resistance training, induced gains in outcomes relevant to sarcopenia and reducing the risk of functional declines." End quote. That's very interesting research, especially if you're part of the aging population above 50 years old. If that was me, I'd be out buying some bloody protein right now. In other, another really good study published in the American Society for Nutrition in 2015, whey protein supplementation preserves postprenatal myofibular protein synthesis during short-term energy restriction in overweight and obese adults. This is really important. Phillips and his team concluded that whey protein supplementation effectively reduced the decline in postprenatal rates of muscle protein synthesis after weight loss, which was considered highly important to, pre uh, to preservation of lean mass during long-term weight loss intervention. Look guys, I could go on and on and on, but for the purpose of this video, I need to wrap it up and conclude my rebuttal by saying this. Michael Mosley did make two very valid points in his television show. Number one, the amount of protein consumed daily does reach a point where more is not more beneficial. In addition, using a protein supplement after exercise without doubt speeds up the protein delivery to the muscle. Both very, very good points. But the rest of his comments on protein supplements was complete rubbish. I, for one, will continue to consume protein, dietary protein and protein supplements both after exercise and throughout the day. In summary guys, conducting research uh, or a research study like the one used to support Mosley's claims on the SBS program is relatively easy. But having your research published in reputable journals is an extremely big deal. Top scientists work their entire lives to get published. That's why when sourcing information, one can't just sweep aside decades of gold standard research and cherry pick one or two pieces that furnish their argument to win a few good television ratings. It's just not good science. I urge you guys, the viewers, to look beyond the flashy titles and sexy screenplay and cleverly scripted dialogue and masterful sensationalism and do what the real experts do. Follow the good science, the real science, because there's stacks of it happening right here in Australia by some of the world's most brilliant minds. Look, I get it. Scouring the internet for credible sources can be frustratingly difficult, especially if you're not a fitness pro. But that's exactly why you should invest the time to go speak to a professional to get your information. But please, for God's sake, don't get your health advice from mainstream media, especially not television. It's just not credible enough. Lucky for you and us, there's stacks of great research being done on the topic and as a result, we actually do know exactly how much protein we really should be consuming and where we should be getting it from. Based on the combined research from three of the industry's brightest scientists, Dr. Hawley, Dr. Phillips, and Dr. Slater, to maximize the effectiveness of your workout, you need to consume 0.3 to 0.4 grams of dietary protein per kilogram of body weight immediately after your workout to initiate protein synthesis. And after exercise, the window of opportunity reopens every two to three hours, meaning you should try to consume your optimal dose approximately five to six times per day. Why five to six times per day? Good question. These guys have proven that you can't backload protein, meaning if you miss a protein meal, you can't make up the dosage later. Because the literature also indicates that your body will metabolize the protein once you hit your sufficient dosage, meaning you just use it for energy. This is where it gets a little complicated. To maintain and grow life-sustaining healthy muscles, you need to consume roughly 2.2 grams of total protein per day per kilogram of body weight. So for me, who's 87 kilos, my daily requirement is about 190 grams of bioavailable protein. But remember, as the published literature indicates, I can only absorb a maximum of 35 grams per three hour window. In addition to the quantity and timing, the source and quality is important too. 
Although protein consumed from meat is usually okay if produced properly, i.e. grass fed, it's extremely expensive, it takes time to digest, and it's often hard to accurately calculate your correct dosage. Considering that the average male would need to eat approximately 630 grams of high quality meat per day spread out across six meals to achieve the right dosage, it's not always practical to rely on food alone. That's a lot of meat, it's a lot of money, and it's a hell of a lot of chewing, right? And also, considering that current literature does indicate that getting bioavailable protein into your muscles within 30 minutes of exercise increases protein synthesis by a whopping 60%, it's well worth opting for the best possible solution. That's why protein supplements come in handy and are why they are so popular. They're concentrated, pre-digested, meaning that the dosage can be exact and your body doesn't need to waste valuable time and effort breaking it down through the digestive system. Definitely some food for thought. Well, that pretty much sums it up, folks. Hopefully, I've answered a few of your questions and you've all learned something in the process. Feel free to shoot me through more questions if you've got them, or share this with someone that might need it. I'm always happy to be of service. Thanks a lot for your time, folks. To your limitless success in the gym, hope to see you all soon. Take care.